go around a few times.
Good morning, everybody. Somebody morning. heard someone say peace string. Uh, no, that's not right. <laughs> that's copyright. Um, and, the, and the song before, did anyone recognize that? OK, I'll tell you later. It's a, it's a bit of a protest song, I guess. I, I was pretty upset by last week's events. So not too much of a protest song. Um, anyway, <laughs> here we go. Hello, everybody. Good Cat. morning. And thank you for joining us here at Unity of Michiana Spiritual Center. And hello to everyone online. I feel like I'm on Zoom again, and I am very familiar with Zoom. So hello, and hello, everyone here physically. Um, I'm Paige Barnes, and I'm joined by Sue Ellen, who is here. Um, we're going to fill in for Reverend Sandy while she is out. So we're, we're both very excited. Um, uh, our mission, we are a heart-centered, multi-generational, and diverse spiritual community dedicated to teaching and practicing a positive life approach in our spiritual journey. So we're very grateful that we are here all together. I'm grateful that y'all are here together. Um, our vision is a world united in loving acceptance, celebrating inclusivity, harmony, prosperity, and awakened consciousness. So now we have Catherine, who is right behind me, and I'll let Sue Ellen take over. Catherine is going to be lighting our Christ candle, and as she does that, we know that that candle is an outer symbol of an inner process. And today I'm going to be sharing an invocation from Charles Fillmore. Those of you who have been around a certain number of time will recognize this. It's one of my very beloved invocations. So Charles Fillmore invites us into this process by saying, I am now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit. In thy divine wisdom, now erase my mortal limitations and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation my world according to thy perfect law. Amen. Now, I'd like to call the children forward so that we may bless them. that you rub your hands together. We see you surrounded in God's love. We see you surrounded in God's love. And we hold you close to our hearts. And we hold you close to our hearts. Yeah, I suppose so. I thought we would get an introduction, but that's okay. Um, have the wrong song up. I've been sleeping a lot lately, and a lot on my mind. So I'm a little out of it today. Excuse me. It's all good. This is this is way early for me every week, but that's <laughs> fine. In this moment, in this day, I remember who I am. Letting fear and worry fall away from me, I open my eyes and see there is only. Oh, that heals 
love that sets us free There is only When I lose myself When it seems I've lost my way When I go inside And I quiet my mind I can hear Spirit gently say There is only love There is only love Love that heals Love that sets us free There is only I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like a mountain, I've got love like a mountain. Got love like a mountain in my soul. I've got love like a mountain. I've got love like a mountain. I've got love like a mountain in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Like a river, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. John Wiseman on the drums, y'all. John Wiseman on the drums. You got a lot of jokes about drummers. <laughs> now you can be part of it. <laughs> the receiving end. Am I stepping up here too soon? You no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> You're Sue Ellen Peters. <laughs> As all of you know, by this time, we have a publication that Unity is well known for called The Daily Word. And I'm going to share the word for today, which is comfort. The love in my heart is my comfort. If the sadness of loss diminishes my joy, as I think of the happy experiences with the loved ones who are no longer with me, I remember that the love we shared will bind us together always. Love can never die. Love, the most beautiful attribute of God, is present always and everywhere. I am comforted as my heart opens to the divine love within me knowing that this same love enfolds all of those I hold dear, no matter where they are on the eternal journey of life. Peace and strength grow in my awareness as I open myself to love's expression. I bless everyone who comes to mind today with a loving thought. I speak a loving word or perform a simple act of kindness whenever I can. As I bring comfort to others, I am comforted also. From Psalms 119, 76, it says, Let your steadfast love become my comfort according to your promise to your servant. 
Now we're going to turn to meditation. I'll begin by sounding the singing bowl, but I just have to say, John, it always amazes me how what you choose just dovetails so well with what I had planned to say. It's almost like we planned this. We didn't, but it works. It always works, doesn't it? You might even want to hold your hand over your heart if you wish and just let this vibration Possibly our greatest task in this life is to move from a conceptual understanding, a head understanding of consciousness, into an actual experience and sense of knowing that we are one with the living energy of the universe, that we are all cut from the same energetic fabric. We are all created from that divine, same divine energy which has spun the wonder of the distant galaxies as well as crafted minute spinning particles which make up everything that we see and those things that are too tiny to be seen with the naked eye. We are not reaching out to make contact with this energy, but rather we are this energy and we experience life from the center of this consciousness within ourselves. Today, I invite you into a sacred time, a time to set aside the processes of thinking and rationality and to open your heart and mind to remember that you are not alone in this life's journey. You are a part of a great divine symphony. You are guided and supported by infinite power by seen and unseen forces of light. It is time for you to truly know the higher aspects of your own being. I invite you to become open to that which, as humans, we don't know yet or can't explain. Stop any directionless searching and become still confident that the divine source of all things is moving through, around, and in you. The answers you seek are within you. So many of life's challenges and seeming uncertainties would quickly dissolve if we could see ourselves and our world through the eyes of divine consciousness. If we could look upon our short-term struggles as a parent might see a young child learning to stand, walk, and speak, we would see ourselves with deeply expanded compassion. We would recognize the truly divine beings that we are, and we would love ourselves for being here. We would love ourselves for being here, for waking up, for growing into all that we came here to be. We would accept our shortcomings and see the perfection in every moment. We would know that every moment serves a purpose in the divine web of being. And even though we might not feel as if we had chosen it, we would make the most of that present moment and purpose with grace and ease. In our life here on earth, we interact with other human beings, some of whom may be beloved friends and family members that we physically connect with in real time and space, while there are others whom we do not personally know, but meet in places like the grocery store, 
walking along a public sidewalk, or even while driving in our cars on the road. Perhaps we only meet some people online or on TV. Even if we do not have an actual physical contact with these people, we certainly keep up a running commentary in our head, which categorizes them, leading us to form opinions about them, which we might label as either favorable or unfavorable. However, with awareness, we are able to focus upon the highest light in others, as well as within ourselves. Now, make no mistake, the behavior or personality of other people may not be pleasant to us, and it might not be easy to accept what is happening in the outer world in the present moment. We are certainly not always pleased with our own behavior or thoughts in any given situation. However, if we look beyond the personality self to the higher reality of people with whom we interact, we can learn to invite their highest self into that space of higher awareness within us. This would usually be done silently and mentally with no words spoken. You are not trying to educate or change anyone else, but merely to ground yourself in your own higher awareness of yourself and others. Now is the time to give yourself the gift, to give yourself the gift of this perspective. We can choose the lenses through which we view other people, ourselves and our experiences. Think of it as a visit to a divine optometrist. Perhaps your prescription for your lenses needs to be updated. When we get new eyeglasses, the objective or the outer world changes, does not change. The outer world does not change when we get new glasses. It's our ability to see more clearly that changes. As you move into a conscious awareness of the divine essence of life, as you feel this connection and oneness, know that you have the capability to be aligned with this, with this state of consciousness when you choose to go there. When you choose to go there. Know that it is just a choice away as you practice shifting your viewpoint. Many of you have lineless bifocals, I'm sure. When you're reading a book, when you're reading, you look through the bottom part of the lens. When you wish to see things which are further away, you look through the top part. Now, when you first got, or when I first got these glasses, it may have been challenging to find the right focus and not get dizzy at the same time. But with practice, I think most of you, if you have them, use these lenses now without even giving it a second thought. In a similar way, it certainly takes practice and focus to direct our consciousness in ways which may not be automatic or well used. Since we often do not shift into a knowledge of our oneness with divinity in the course of our daily lives especially when things are getting stressful. However, great masters throughout time have shown us that this is possible, and many have called us to follow suit. Not in some future time, but right now. So learn to support yourself through using affirmations such as I am one with the divine. I am connected to the source of infinite knowledge. I accept divine guidance in my life journey. It is from this state of awareness that we offer prayers for ourselves and for the people and situations that we have concern and love for. 
So now, as we hold in consciousness those names that are in our prayer box, we will also be invited to speak aloud the names of other people, places, and situations that we want to lift up into the vibration of wholeness and healing. With the knowledge that our energy, combined with the like-minded energy of others in spiritual community, sees all situations in the world from the highest state of consciousness, and that this energy that envelops and surrounds all is loving, healing, and transforming. I now invite you to speak aloud the names of people and situations that you wish to offer up into this light of truth, healing, and wholeness. Reverend Sandy and the Black, Courtney, Leland Archer, Brandon, our world leaders, the members of the armed forces who have supported this country so unselfishly and so often at great cost to themselves, whether they are still living in this dimension or whether they are in spirit. We appreciate and bless them and their contributions. We give thanks that this healing in light of awareness is now so for ourselves and for all of those whom we touch with our love and concern. We come back now to our present awareness knowing that we can revisit this state of consciousness whenever we choose. Amen. So, um, yeah, we picked this one kind of late um, because of the news of last week, mostly. Um, so this is going to be a congregational song. So please sing along. Cheers. 
Thank you. John and Kevin, thank you. You always bring us messages that are so on point for what we need to hear. So thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to say a quick sentence about Reverend Sandy's message. Today we will have an encore presentation by Reverend Sandy via the marvels of modern technology and the marvels of Kevin and Susan in honor of Memorial Day and in honor of those who've given their service and in many cases their lives in service to our country. So with that, we're going to move to Reverend Sandy, whom we know is having a wonderful and much deserved vacation. Oh, gosh. Well, here we are in uh, Memorial Day weekend. My talk title is Honoring with Gratitude. Honoring with Gratitude. And how many of you have had plans or already had some things going on for Memorial Day weekend? You can raise your hand. You can shout it out. What you doing? Come on. So I'll tell them yeah, on here. Come on. What are you doing? Um, a barbecues. Grilling. We're grilling. That's right. Anybody out there in, in, in video land out there grilling probably? Yeah. Yeah. And gathering together somewhat once again perhaps. You know, and, and we have these wonderful holidays that come up, and, and, and we have delightful activities that we participate in. And yet sometimes, I know for me, I, I want to stop and pause for a moment. Think, okay, what, what is this holiday, this special Memorial Day all about? So I'd like to share a little bit of history with you around Memorial Day. And, and to say that it is about coming together in memory of those who have died in our nation's service, to honor those who have given so very much to uphold our freedom. And we oftentimes confuse Memorial Day with Veterans Day. I certainly have. Because Veterans Day is a day to honor all who serve and, and all of our veterans in so many avenues, Memorial Day is a day to honor those who have given that ultimate sacrifice. Tamara Bolton says, this is the Memorial Day, this is the day we pay homage to those, all those who didn't come home. Who didn't come home. This is not Veterans Day, it's not a celebration in that sense. It is a day of solemn contemplation over the cost of freedom, over the cost of freedom. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that in a few minutes, of how much we take freedom for granted. In scripture from Proverbs 10, 7a, it says, the memory of the righteous is a blessing. In remembering these people who have given their all, we experience the blessing of that gratitude for what they have given for all. And in John 15, 13, many of you are familiar with this scripture, and it says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. For one's friends. So, historically, the the practice of honoring those who have fallen in battle dates back at actually thousands of years. Ancient Greeks and Romans held annual days of remembrance for loved ones, festooning their graves with flowers and holding public festivals. And as we look back to the history, the origins of Memorial Day here in the United States, there's a lot of stories um, as, as history often isn't exactly clear, there's a lot of stories that take us back to what was originally called Decoration Day. And, and it would be natural after the Civil War and, and the women who served in the hospitals and who were at home who wanted to decorate the graves of their loved ones who had died 
And so uh, one of the first remembered times originally when they did this was um, in a hospital town of Columbus, um, uh, Mississippi, and it was in April 1866. However, as research continues to come to light, there's a, a greater awareness for us to note that actually the earliest Memorial Day recorded in our history happened a year before that, in 1865. And that was when African-American freed slaves took a day apart to honor their fallen comrades and soldiers. So it's important for us to embrace as we look at our history to appreciate that place in our hearts as humanity that wants to say, thank you, I love you, for the gift, the ultimate gift that you gave to oppose tyranny and to uphold the ideals of freedom. Memorial Day officially was proclaimed on May 5th in 1868, so that was a few years following that, and it was uh, proclaimed by General John Logan, and it was first observed on May 30th in 1868, and that's when flowers were placed on the graves of Union and Confederate soldiers at Arlington National Cemetery. One that nice little historical fact that I really appreciated is they specifically chose a date that was not an anniversary of any specific battle that had been waged. So it was a time set apart to honor, to give gratitude. After World War I, the holiday changed from honoring just those who died fighting in the Civil War to honoring Americans who died fighting in any war. The holiday has evolved as we continue wanting to honor those who give their lives in service. So as we kind of pause and think about, you know, our, our Memorial Day celebration, we stop to think about lives that have been given for our freedoms. Let us consider all the freedoms that we take for granted. And I'm going to engage with you guys, and because I'm in front of um, the camera here for our live stream service, most of you who are here know I love to walk up and down and, and talk with you, but so I kind of need to stay up here. But I'm going to say, jump in, toss out some of the freedoms that we oftentimes absolutely take for granted. Yeah. Yes, so it, for those of you at home, freedom to be here, to partake in a spiritual, religious, whatever that is, whatever form it is for you, the freedom to participate in that. Anybody else? F absolutely, did you say that? And thank you. Freedom to vote, for heaven's sakes. Our education. Freedom of speech. Think about that. Think about the last time, though it's challenging, but we get into a few political debates, don't we? Facebook, everywhere else. And we have the right to post or to speak to our own, to our own thoughts and our own considerations. Freedom to love and be loved. Right for the right to have a fair trial. Gosh, you know, as I was reading some of these, it's like, I'm, I'm so used to them, I take them for granted. How about being able to marry who, whoever you want? What about the freedom to actually access information? Many other countries... You do not have that right to pop onto Google, you know? So um, it's, it's like so many wonderful freedoms. Also freedom against um, unlawful search. You know, we, we have our privacy. We have our space. Come on. Come on some more. 
Religious, absolutely. And, and tra oh yes, freedom to travel. How about this? We can kind of wear whatever we want for the most part. As long as we have something on, probably. <laughs> we might. Yeah, for the most part. And there are some countries where you cannot cut your hair if you so choose or in the way you want. Yeah. That, thank you, yes. Women in many countries are not able to drive a car. What else do I have on here? We can own our own property if we so choose. Oh, yeah, on Freedom Drive, that was right on there. And also, we have a right to defend ourselves. In many countries, people don't. Now, so if we, as we just breathe for a moment, you know, we have electricity. We have water that comes through the tap. Many countries don't. And we don't think of it necessarily as a freedom, but it is a gift that we have. And this is such, this is such a, a very special time and a special holiday to remember that, that people have given their lives so that we can appreciate these. And, and, you know, as time goes on, we sort of forget and we take it for granted. So I'm inviting us to remember with heartfelt gratitude those who've given their lives for freedom. So we just sit here and kind of resonate in whatever freedoms we most appreciate and appreciate the cost and, and be grateful, not in, in a way that, that takes us down, but in a way that uplifts us into a sense of gratitude that we can send forth, a sense of appreciation for that ultimate, ultimate gift that was given by so many. Author um, Jeff Dixon says, sometimes we focus so much on what we don't have that we fail to see, appreciate, and use what we do. Franklin Roosevelt says, those who have long enjoyed such privileges as we enjoy forget in time that men have died, men have died to win them. And of course, we know men and women. And a Sergeant Major Bill Paxton, he was retired and a revered Marine Corps Sergeant Major. He says, may we never forget our fallen comrades. Freedom isn't free. Freedom isn't free. And we can easily take that for granted if we don't stop for just a moment to let that space of gratitude fill our hearts, to take time to honor what others have given for us to be right here where we are today, enjoying the things that we enjoy. And so it's a, a wonderful time tomorrow on Memorial Day itself to, to an, appreciate and enjoy the activities you're participating in, but to take some time apart to move into the heart of your being and to be a part of putting out into our universe that energetic vibration of gratitude that lifts us all up and shifts us into a place of appreciation and openness. So back um, in May, uh, on May 11th, 1950, there was a joint resolution approved by Congress in honor and recognition of all fallen heroes um, that requested the president issue a proclamation calling on the people of the United States to observe each Memorial Day as a day of prayer for permanent peace and designated mating a period um, on that day when the people of the United States might join together in prayer. So our president each and every year 
and this year also has proclaimed Memorial Day, May 31st, 2021, as a day of prayer for permanent peace and designated the hour beginning in each locality at 11 a.m. as a time for people to unite in prayer. So friends, thank goodness we have our, our, our iPhones, our, our Android phones. Put a little reminder in your phone, 11 a.m. And just stop for a moment for what you're doing tomorrow. Take time, not only to, to have a sense of gratitude, but to give thanks and, and to hold that space prayerfully of peace, of peace going forward, of, of moving into new ways of being. And I'd like to share an unknown quote with you that says, for a soldier, a lot can happen in one minute. Because when you cho choose service over self, one minute can mean the difference between living or dying. Between going home to your family and never seeing them again. Sacrifice means placing every minute of your life on the line for your country. And sometimes you don't come home. So in furthering the presidential proclamation, there's also, in December of 2000, the U.S. Congress passed and the president signed into law the National Moment of Remembrance Act. National Moment of Remembrance. And, it's, and in that proclamation, the president has further asked all Americans to observe this national moment of remembrance with a minute, a minute of silence, to remember and to honor those who have died in service to the nation beginning at 3 p.m. local time. So that, that's two reminders to put on your phone. 11 a.m., the presidential national request for prayer for peace, and at 3 p.m., PM for a moment of remembrance, one minute. And we can all join together and know that people across the nation are participating in this experience. So I'd like for you each to just sit for a moment, whether you know of anyone, a relative, a friend who died in any of our many wars, and it may not even be someone who is in your lifetime, going back to the Civil War, World War I and World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam War, currently Afghanistan and terrorism that people are still fighting and dying for. And let us also take a moment to be aware that we have been experiencing an entirely different kind of a worldwide war that has been the pandemic we have experienced. A war against that invasion of a virus that took away our freedoms to gather, that took away our chance to hug, to be with those we love, and to know that there have been so many in, in the armed services, as well as others, who in fighting this different kind of a war have given of their lives to be there to help people through this pandemic. So this Memorial Day, I invite you to celebrate it in a way that you do with others or on your own, but to take those specific times to remember how powerful prayer is and what a difference it makes in our world. 11 a.m. in the morning, prayer for peace. One moment of remembrance at 3 p.m. in the afternoon for all those who have given their lives. St. Ambrose said, No duty is more urgent than that of returning Thanks. And President Harry Truman 
says our debt to the heroic men and valiant women in the service of our country can never be repaid. They have earned our undying gratitude. America will never forget their sacrifices. And so, dear friends, as we breathe, and as we truly acknowledge the gift that others have so selflessly given for us to have the freedoms that we have, we do so with a recognition that one of the greatest things that we can do in honoring that is to live forward. And so I will share this last scripture with you from Galatians 5.13 that says, My friends, you were chosen to be free. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do anything you want. Use it as an opportunity to serve each other. John, thank you for the beautiful rendition of TAPS. Thank you very much, John. I was thinking that I didn't realize I was in person. I was like, wow, the audio is wonderful. Um, so wrapping up um, happenings and events, uh, the Wednesday Zoom discussion group, which I get emails for um, from 6 to 7.15. Um, join us for conversation relevant to everyday issues, followed by a mindfulness meditation with music to uplift and inspire. Um, and you are welcome to attend any or all sessions. And this is uh, via email with the Zoom link. And let's see what else. Um, it says that if you would like to, to, you can sign up for the Zoom link um, or for the email list out there if you're not part of it. And then you can also join the group from our app or Facebook page. Um, the upcoming themes are Peace with Impermanence and Riding Waves of Change. And next Sunday, June 5th, which is someone's birthday. Um, our youth department will present the Sunday message titled Twinkies with God uh, and join us to support them. Twinkies are really cool, so I'm excited. I wonder if that someone's going to have a Twinkie for their birthday. <laughs> that might be. You know, when Reverend Sandy was talking, I thought about all the kinds of freedom she talked about. And since the pandemic has started, Terry and I have pretty much given ourselves probably at least another bachelor's degree in history by watching all of the streaming dramas that are on TV, a lot which have to do with the political process, mostly in Europe, but some in this country. And, you know, we certainly, I take for granted that I can come here every Sunday. But, you know, the, the political and religious history that was so deeply entwined was very, I hate to say, violent, combative, controlling. And it was pretty brutal, you know. And even though all that did not occur in our country, I recognize that the fact that we are here now is the ongoing part of a long stream of freedoms that we are claiming. So I take one little sentence from what Reverend Sandy said. She was quoting, use your freedoms in the opportunity to serve each other. So it was a good thought. But I'm up here because I'm supposed to be doing the offering part of the service, which we have now arrived at the point in the service where we 
honor and give. Perhaps we've done so electronically, but also in person we, we can. There's a basket in the back of the room. Our love offerings to give back to this community so that it can continue to support us. Because the support we give to the community is really its almost total source of financial ability to continue. So now I invite you into this space in this process by forming the infinity circle with your hands, which celebrates and commemorates the flow of energy that we partake in. Um, if you wish to give a gift electronically, you can do so by going to unitymichiana.org, which is our website, or to our phone app. As I said, there's an offering box in the back of the room if you choose. So now, as we hold our hands together, we say our affirmation for prosperity together. Thank you, God, for this abundance that I share. Through the divine law of circulation, my gift blesses all, and I am prosperously blessed in return. We bless this offering knowing that as we tap into that deeper part of ourselves that we touched in today, we know that this energy goes out into the universe to bless ourselves and each other in all the ways that it can find to do so. Amen. Okay. Now we will join in our um, peace song and our prayer for... Oh, it, it, yeah, I guess we're both yeah. doing it. I don't know. I'm here for more support. Is that what support. we're doing? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so if, if you would start us with that, with the singing, John, everybody certainly may stand as they... Stretch, stretch. Yeah, stretch out a little. <laughs> Have a wonderful week. You have a wonderful week. Thank you.